Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. More and more attention is being given to the role that hydrogen, especially green hydrogen, can play in decarbonizing energy and production systems. Terence Grimmer joins me to discuss South Africa's potential to eke out a niche in the production of this commodity. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. South Africa has always followed hydrogen development quite closely. Yes, being the world's platinum capital, we've always looked at hydrogen as a way of creating demand for platinum because platinum is used as a catalyst in the fuel cell. And the hydrogen fuel cell uh, vehicles have been the stream for many, many decades uh, where you have zero pollutant vehicles running on hydrogen and obviously having the platinum embedded. But also we have SASL, which turns coal through a gasification process into hydrogen and it's a, it's a large producer of hydrogen which it then uses uh, to produce fuels and chemicals. So we have been a, a hydrogen location both from a production perspective as well as from a potential raw material supplier into a hydrogen economy. So we've always had it on a watching reef. Some new developments could see the country emerge as a green hydrogen hub. Yes, the main development is really the, the steep fall in renewable energy costs over the last decade or so. So solar is now by far the cheapest new form of electricity in many, many countries around the world, including South Africa. Wind has also come down massively, um, not as steeply as solar in the last decade, but it's a more mature technology and its costs are also highly competitive now. And these two technologies are opening the way for electrolysis, which is a process of using clean electricity. You can use any electricity, but clean electricity in this case, otherwise the decarbonization imperative falls away to convert water into hydrogen and oxygen and to be able to sell that hydrogen on the world market. Now the combination that South Africa has of very potent solar and wind resources together with large land resources makes it an ideal location for large scale solar and wind. And having an oversized solar and wind system means that we won't just produce electricity for consumption in industry and households, but we could also produce electricity in South Africa for production of hydrogen. And that hydrogen could be used as a, a pure export product should the infrastructure develop. Around the world, we're seeing many countries developing hydrogen strategies, and there are plans to develop import terminals because there's a disconnect between the markets that want hydrogen and the markets that can produce th this clean hydrogen, this uh, hydrogen through electrolysis from renewable energy. Uh, there's a disconnect. The market that, that demand it are places in Asia, such as Japan and Korea, and obviously Europe. Germany having a hydrogen strategy and a number of other countries such as Netherlands, the European Union too now has a hydrogen strategy as a, as a block. So the, the, to have competitive clean hydrogen or green hydrogen, you need these locations with sun, wind and land. And so countries such as South Africa, Morocco, Australia, those countries in those, that belt around the world, those sunny belts, the tropics, uh, Chile, are going to be prime locations for producing green hydrogen using electrolysis. So it's a huge competitive advantage that we have. And the other advantage we have is that we've used to converting hydrogen into fuels and chemicals through Sassel's large scale Fisher Trops complexes in, in Secunda uh, and in Sasselberg. And there's a potential here to actually take some of the hydrogen to export directly but also to convert, for instance, some of a portion of that hydrogen into uh, certain fuels that can be used in shipping like ammonia or kerosene that can be used in aviation. And we could become a large scale producer, say if we chose one of those, such as aviation fuels, we could be a large producer, producing the hydrogen cleanly, then converting that into an aviation fuel for uh, a large portion of the export market. What would need to happen for South Africa to unlock this opportunity? The main thing is that the policymakers' government has to be alive to the opportunity. Slowly we're seeing a, an awakening there. We have unfortunately dropped the ball on the Renewables Build Program, which we really needed to keep the lights on. But there's an opportunity to really upscale, accelerate 
from this low base and to start overbuilding almost beyond electricity, looking beyond electricity, looking to the hydrogen economy. But this requires policy certainty. That policy certainty in turn will create the, the confidence for amongst investors to invest in, in large scale solar and wind, not just for electricity, but for, for other products such as hydrogen. We already see that Anglo Platinum is looking at developing uh, a, 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 a dedicated solar facility for the production of hydrogen. So there is appetite, um, there is a growing market. And we see this week the International Energy Agency saying that there's going to be this huge growth in hydrogen because hydrogen is going to be a key bridging fuel. So when you want to decarbonize the world's energy system, the best way to do it is to integrate more and more clean electricity, mostly renewables, into that system. But there are hard to decarbonize sectors through ele using electricity. So for instance, steel making, or as I mentioned earlier, aviation. And this is where hydrogen, is, clean hydrogen, can play a role in helping to decarbonize those sectors that, have hit it, that have, are going to be very, very difficult through electrification to decarbonize. So we need our policymakers to align our policy with this big opportunity. It's a huge scale up that we're talking about it around the world at the moment. Uh, hydrogen, which is mostly produced from from gas and in South Africa's case, coal is about 75 million tons a year. We're talking about scaling that up to well above 500 million tons by 2050. And that would require a big investment in electrolysis. Uh, and there's an opportunity here for South Africa to become one of the world leaders in green hydrogen and in some of the derivative fuels, uh, the power to X fuels that can, can arise, such as aviation fuels. So we need to uh, sort of pay attention to developments and then get our policy and our research efforts and as our investor community and our businesses aligned to the hydrogen opportunity. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.